Because we're using a router to find out all our routes here, make it really convenient to have a nice, easy to define URLs, whatever we're doing. This makes it a little bit more tricky to echo out any markup that we need to use. So let's say that we wanted to be able to submit a form on this page. Well, of course, what we would have to do is maybe echo this out here, which obviously is just gonna get us into a huge mess. Now, prior to this, you might be used to doing something like the following. You might be used to saying something like a contact form page, and then inside of here, going ahead and defining out your markup, and then writing all of your markup in here, and maybe up the top of the file, having some kind of PHP tags to deal with this, or of course, submitting this through to a completely new page. Now, Slim takes away all of that, as do most uh, frameworks. And essentially what we want to do is split up the rendering of a view, which is only responsible for showing what we want to show on the page with the logic that we have within our routes or our controllers when we get onto that. So what we're gonna do in this part is just take the steps to install a extension for Slim, which will allow us to use something called Twig. And we have a series on Twig as well, if you're not too familiar with it, but we will be going into it a little bit in a minute. And then what we're gonna do is move on to the next part, look at rendering a view and uh, all of that other stuff. So let's start by just heading over to the Slim documentation. This is always a really good way to get started uh, with things that you're not too sure of. And let's come down to the add-ons here. And these are uh, called templates in this case, but you can call them templates or views, whatever you want to call them. Now to actually work with this, we need to install a new dependency with Composer. This is the Slim Twig View component. Now what this will allow us to do is use Twig very conveniently within Slim to separate out our views from our logic. So the first thing I'm gonna do is require this in with Composer and then we'll look at the setup. We're gonna copy and paste this over, but I'm gonna explain exactly what's happening. So if we come over to our command line and go ahead and run Composer or phpcomposer.phar, whichever one you're using, we're gonna require this in and just wait for this to finish. Okay, so now that that's downloaded, we know that this is automatically loaded in because we are requiring in our auto loader. Now what we can do is attach this to the container. So this gives us an example. We've already seen this here and we've explained how we can attach things to the container. So we know how this works and we know that we can access them within Roots now. So I'm gonna copy and paste this over. There's nothing wrong with doing that. Any new Slim project I start with, I always just go and copy this code over, but I'm gonna to explain to you exactly what it's doing here. So let's go ahead and paste this in and let's look at what we have. So obviously what we're doing is we are attaching this to the container and we're calling this view. So we know that now inside of any of our routes, we can call this view, or I forgot to mention in the last part, we can use get as well. So we can do that, but really it's a lot easier just to use this as a property like so. So we know that that's on the container. We also have this container instance passed in here. Now, essentially what this is doing is it's giving us access to uh, what the container looks like at the point that we are adding this onto the container. And this is where this kind of comes in a bit later. But let's take a look at this for now. So we are creating a new Slim Views Twig instance. We have a path to our templates or our views just here. And then we have a cache directory if we want to add one. So let's go ahead and just fix this up before we move on to these uh, slim specific twig extensions. So a path to templates. Well, we need somewhere that we can keep all of our views. So what I would normally do is create a folder in here called resources or something like that. And then inside of here, I would create a views folder, but you can put this anywhere you like. It's really entirely up to you. However you set your project up is, uh, like I said, completely up to you. Slim makes it very easy for you to be flexible. So now that we know that we have a path to our templates, we can go ahead and define this out. Now I'm gonna use DIR to get the current directory because this makes it a little bit easier if we are moving files around to uh, go ahead and define this out properly. But essentially I want to go into resources and views and that is it. Now, if we wanted to cache our views, we can go ahead and uh, define a path to our cache here. We're not gonna look at that now, so I'm gonna go ahead and set this to false. Uh, caching views basically means that they're cached and if nothing has changed, they're just delivered as they are. It just kind of speed things up a bit, but like I said, we'll ignore this for now. So now that we have that set up, what are these slim specific extensions? Well, within Twig, if you have worked with Twig, 
you can basically use functions within there. And all this Twig extension is doing is it's setting up a couple of helpful functions for us. So I'm going to go ahead and open this and we'll just take a very quick look at these. Uh, these two are path for and base URL. So within your views, if you ever wanted to get the full URL to your application, you can use base URL. And if you wanted to get the path for a specific route, you can go ahead and use that as well. Now, we're not going to touch this yet. We're going to look at that in the next section when we look at routing. And we're going to be building a form example that we can submit. But for now, all we're doing once we've done this and set this up is returning, and this is very, very important, what we have instantiated, which is this. So now with that done, what we can now do without having to write any HTML inside of here is start to create our application structure in terms of what people see inside of this views folder. So what we're going to do is now that we've spoken about how this does work, we're going to move over to the next video and we're going to look at rendering a view. And we'll also look at setting up a basic template structure just to get you started uh, when you're building an application. So let's go over and look at that next.